Before going out, it's worth just going over a, um, a few of the numbers that you're going to see when we do the catalytic converter uh, test. Um, there are four main gases that we look at because the catalytic converter converts these gases or in some cases uses the gases as part of the, uh, the process by which it works. So I've written up both sets of numbers. One before the catalytic converter starts working, which you should know by now, is approximately 360 degrees C. And then the other ones, once the catalytic converter is working, so you can see the comparison between the gases. If there is no change, we'll assume the catalytic converter is not doing its job. If we do see a change, and there should be a, quite a brief period that this process happens, um, you'll just see the numbers quickly change, and then they'll stabilise again, and you'll see the second set. So, before the catalytic converter is really doing its job properly, in other words, before it's um, reached its right temperature, the typical gas values that you'll see are written in blue. So our hydrocarbons should be 100 to 200 parts per million. Now, it does vary depending on the age of the vehicle, etc., but that's just sort of a general value. Carbon monoxide should be approximately 1.5%. Carbon dioxide, or CO2, should usually be around 14%, and oxygen around 1% to 2%. Okay, remembering this does change depending on the vehicle, and to some extent, even different gas analyzers on the same vehicle will read slightly different. So this is a ballpark type measurement. Now, once the catalytic converter does reach its operating temperature, we should see the sudden change in gases. Remembering that the idea of the catalytic converter is to convert bad gases into good ones, or safer ones, not toxic or noxious ones. So our hydrocarbons will then change from 100 to 200 parts per million down to nearly nothing, or close to 60. Hydrocarbons are bad for the atmosphere, so the catalytic converter is converting the bad gas into a different type of gas, so therefore that value will reduce. Carbon monoxide, again, this is another noxious, noxious gas, will convert from about 1.5% to as good as nothing. There may be a little bit of a reading, but it should be very, very close to zero. Already we've eliminated two of our bad gases or close to it. Carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide value will actually increase. It's part of the output or part of the conversion process of the other two gases. So what we find is that the gas will increase. The other thing about carbon uh, dioxide is that it's at its highest value when everything is running its best. So it's 16% and it may even top that. Last of all, oxygen should change from approximately 1% to 2% and it may disappear altogether or there should be a very small amount left over. Now you might think, well, what's the point in losing a gas when Obviously oxygen isn't bad for us, but well, it's actually used in the catalytic conversion process of these gases. So it is actually used up in that process. Okay, so there's some background. Let's now, get, now go out and actually do some testing. Okay, for this job we need a uh, minimum four gas, maybe five gas analyzer to check the um, readings of the catalytic converter, making sure it does do its conversion process. Okay, we'll start off with making sure the unit is set up. Now typically a 4 gas or 5 gas analyzer um, will need time to warm up, so plug it in. It can take anywhere between 5 and 15 minutes depending on the um, model of the unit and, and how it's design designed to work internally. So ours has been on for quite a while, it is set up and we've gone through the configuration process. Okay, we then need to make sure that the uh, gas pickup pipe is in the exhaust. Make sure it's well inserted, and obviously we don't want any oxygen air leaks before doing this. And we'll also make sure that the exhaust extractor is on. So that we don't die of the fumes that are going to be uh, emitted. Okay, so we've looked at what should happen in theory in terms of the catalytic converter operation, the uh, gases that should change and how they should change so that we can determine if it really is doing its job. We also have looked at the setup of um, the machines that we're going to have to use, the 4-gas or 5-gas analyzer. So the next uh, part of this is to actually see what happens on the job. Okay, so first of all we've got a fixed screen obviously sitting in front of us right now um, with a picture which is just on the commencement of the engine having started. Now because the catalytic converter is cold it hasn't started doing its job yet um, the readings that we get will be initially a very rich mixture because we've got uh, fuel enrichment for cold start conditions and that will um, give us a particular reading which we'll have a look at and then as the engine warms up and remembering this is before the catalytic converter does its job 
we should see the, um, the numbers change on the four gases um, to the point where it will stabilise again before the catalytic converter operation. So those final numbers should be about what we talked about uh, in the first section of this video uh, before the catalytic converter operation. Okay, so um, that should be um, the rings we've got now. So you'll notice the uh, carbon monoxide compared to what we spoke about where it should be um, around the 1.5 percentage when the engine's warmed up it's huge, it's 5.4. The hydrocarbons, around 800 parts per million. Normally, once the engines warm up two or 300, we've got fuel enrichment, so the number will be quite high. Um, CO2, carbon dioxide, um, that number is very low. The engine's quite inefficient at the moment, so it's a very low number. And the oxygen is also very low because it's such a rich mixture. There's not as much uh, oxygen content that's uh, uh, going through the system. So that's sort of the basis of the numbers there. Of course, when you do the emission control module, you'll learn a lot more about how these gases are formed, etc. Um, but this is just for the exhaust side of things. Okay, so we've got that up and going. Probably the next best thing to do would be to look at what happens when we actually have the engine running. So this is currently running. The engines are being held around the 1500-2000 um, rev mark just to get the engine warmed up to the stage where it will um, sort of... Uh, get to just basic normal operating temperature without the catalytic converter operating. Alright, so looking at the numbers, carbon monoxide slowly coming down to about typically around the 1.5%. Our hydrocarbons, like these in case, which is the raw fuels you like, again they're coming down. We said normally that's two or three hundred parts per minute before the catalytic converter starts operating. Now CO2 we said about the 14 mark. Um, and we're heading in that direction, in fact we're there now and our oxygen um, normally a little bit higher than what that's reading now that could be a bit of a suspect O2 sensor on the gas analyzer or perhaps there's an issue with anything there okay so that's uh, about where that should be in terms of stabilization alright so having a quick look at those numbers uh, this is warmed up but without the catalytic converter operating Next thing we're going to do is take up the revs. We're going to take them up to about um, two and a half, three thousand revs. It'll only take about a minute or so, and what you'll see is those numbers very quickly start changing. We've talked about what they should change to. Let's actually see what happens. Okay, revs are held up high. The numbers are starting to move. Okay, our CO. Now, of course, when we first did the initial rev, there was an initial injection of fuel. So it will uh, just sort the reading just for a moment. But once that, once that stabilised and the sensor continues to warm up, we've got this conversion process happening. So hydrocarbons, one of the gases that aren't good for the environment, certainly coming down a long way. Carbon monoxide, which is a potentially deadly gas, um, again coming down pretty much to nothing. So hopefully soon it will be nothing. Oxygen comes down, not because it's a bad gas, but simply because it's been used in the catalytic uh, process and CO2, carbon dioxide, is coming up. Carbon dioxide is generally at five when the engine is running the best. Okay, there's only really uh, about 10 seconds to go here, and we'll have a look at the numbers when it's all over. So nearly there, and that's pretty much stabilised. We can hold it at that point there. There we go. Carbon monoxide, as good as nothing. Exactly what we said would happen. Hydrocarbons down to 43 um, parts per million. Again, pretty much exactly what we said. CO2, 15.9 it says on the gauge. What did we say? We said it should be about 16. So close it doesn't matter. And our oxygen, there's just a tiny little bit left, which is a good thing. It's used in the conversion process. If it was down to zero, and it does happen, then there's nothing left to help with the uh, conversion process if it needed it. So just having a little bit left is a good thing. Okay, so hopefully that'll give you a good appreciation of what should happen with a catalytic converter when uh, we're using a four gas analyzer to check that it's actually doing its job properly.